Right, what I'm going to do is explain how to use the Deltang programmer module to program a receiver. In this case, it's the RX60A, which is used to control uh, loco railway locomotives. Um, here's the TX22 transmitter, which controls up to 12 different locos. Just explain how I've wired everything up. Um, here is the programmer module wired up to a battery and a switch. And here I've got the RX60 receiver wired up to a battery box. At the moment I'm using alkaline batteries. While I'm experiment, I prefer to use alkalines because rechargeables have a tendency to explode if you accidentally short circuit them. I've got a, an auto reset fuse here, just in case something does get short circuited. A switch, it's a two way switch so that I can either turn on the receiver or I can uh, recharge the batteries through this socket here. I've got a motor connected to the receiver and I've also wired in an LED to the two pads for directional lighting. This is a bi-directional LED, so if I turn the receiver on, now hopefully you can see the LED flashing, it's hunting for a signal at the moment. Turn the transmitter on and the LED, there we are, goes to a steady light showing that the two are communicating with each other. So if I turn the motor control. You may not be able to see it, but perhaps you can hear it. And in the opposite direction. And the LED on the directional lighting. So if I turn the direction switch that way, it glows green. Turn it the other way, it glows red because it's a bi-directional LED. Now at the moment, uh, when the receiver comes, the default setting is that if the transmitter is turned off, after three seconds, the motor comes to a stop. So I'll just show you that. There's the motor, dancing around. If I turn the transmitter off, the motor stops after about three seconds. Turn back on again, and off it goes again. Now, I prefer to be able to turn the transmitter off and let the loco carry on running. In that way, I don't run down the transmitter battery. So, what I need to do is to reset the failsafe. So, first thing to do is to make sure you've got the right model number and version number of the software. So in this case it's an R60A and it's version 2 of the software. There's a, a 2 in gold uh, felt tip pen on top of the main chip. And so from the website downloaded this and it shows me that on menu 4 the function 3 is the sleep function and I can change the setting from one to six hours or even so that it never sleeps. I'm going to set the sleep function to five hours. That's about what I, I think a, a running session would be. And then uh, I'll also need to reset the failsafe to setting five so that the failsafe will match the sleep time. So in fact, the motor will continue to run for five hours before it stops. So how do we do that? Well, when the programmer module arrives, none of the settings have been set. They're all on setting one. So we need to change the settings on each of the pins. So pin one, I need to change to four, four flashes to show that I'm using menu 4. Pin 2 I need initially to set to 3 flashes 
to show that I want to reset the sleep time. And then pin 3 I'm going to set to 5 flashes to show that I want the sleep time to be 5 hours. So you get two bind plugs with the programmer module. The red one is for lowering the settings, the, the number of flashes, and the black one is to increase the number of flashes. So if I put the bind plug on the first set of pins, it now flashes one, now two, one, two, three, it does it twice, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, which is what I want, so I take it off, and it's now set to four. So pin one is set to four flashes, which means menu four. I now want to set pin two to three flashes to show I'm on function three. So there's one, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. So take it off. One, two, three. So pin two is now set to three flashes. And pin three, I want to set to five flashes to say I want the sleep time to be five hours. So here we go. One, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So that's five flashes. Take it off. And that's set to five. So now what I need to do is to transmit those settings to the receiver. So it's on. It's communicating with its main transmitter. So now I press the button on the programmer module and you should see the LED on there flash to show that it's receiving the update. There it goes, it's flashing like crazy and then it goes solid to show it's received it. So we turn it off and then back on again to store those settings. I now need to reset the programmer so that I can reset the failsafe. So that's menu 4. Well, pin 1 is already set to 4 flashes, so I don't need to change that. Pin 2 I need to set to 4 flashes. It's on 3 at the moment, so I use the black plug because I want to go up from 3 to 4. So here we go. I put that in. 1, 2, 3, four. 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. That's it. That's what I want. One, two, three, four. So it was flashing three. I've now increased that to four. Pin three is already set to five. Five says to the failsafe, use the sleep time for the failsafe. The sleep time is five hours, so the um, failsafe will be reset to five hours. So I transmit that by pressing the button. Watch the LED on there. Right, it's gone solid. So if I turn that off, turn it back on again, hopefully now it should have reset the failsafe so that the motor continues to run to f for five hours if I turn the transmitter off. Let's turn this off just in case I accidentally send the wrong signal. Let's get the motor going. I'm just going to start moving across the table. Turn off the transmitter. Now before it switched itself off after three seconds it's now continuing to run even though the transmitter is off. If I now turn the transmitter back on again, I can get control of the motor and turn it down to zero, turn it the other way, and so on. 
seems a little bit complicated until you get your head round it, and then it's very straightforward. That's all there is to it.